Hi, so I'm Lisa and welcome to the Oso Gecko Cork Fabric Sewing Corner. So it's official, summer's here, it's roasting hot, we've all got our sunglasses ready to go. But what are you going to put them in when you're not wearing them? Or what are you putting your normal glasses in when you're wearing your sunglasses? It's time for something a little bit different. It's time for something a little bit more fun. And here comes the prism. The prism is a really fun, stylish way to keep your glasses safe in your bag. It's really easy to transport around with you and it's just something a bit different. Inside, you can see there's lots and lots of space, so I can happily put my sunglasses in there. Loads and loads of room still. If I put a little bit of protection in there, I could probably get my other glasses in there too if I needed to. Here's another one. So this is a really fun quick sew. Nothing too complicated. It has an outer, a lining, some gussets which need to be done in a non-frame fabric, but your outer and lining, you can use whatever you'd like. It's clipped together with a magnetic snap, but of course you can use any other snaps you'd like. You can use turn locks, anything you have to hand. Pattern testers had loads and loads of fun making the prism. Here's some of their pictures. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe while you're here so you don't miss out on any future videos. So here are the things you will need to create your prism glasses case. We've got a rotary cutter, that's for cutting my cork. Um, if you're not using cork or vinyl, you can use anything else like a pair of scissors. Um, I've got my thread snaps, some Microtex 9014 needles. Again, this is because mainly because I'm using cork, obviously you always use Microtex needles. Um, if you're using a different fabric, you may not need Microtex. I've got my Gutterman polyester thread, which I'm going to use in um, the main needle and the bobbin. I've got some clips, again, because I'm using cork, I need to use clips, but if you're using something like quilting cotton, you could use pins instead. Um, I've got a couple of marking tools, a pencil and a chalk marker, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I like to use both and i've got some glue now i've got this little sew line glue i've got my gutterman glue and i've got some double-sided tape now those three are actually for attaching my label now i don't need all three obviously it just depends what mood i'm in when i get there as to which one i could use whichever one you've got to hand will be absolutely fine if you have a label if you don't have a label it doesn't matter and last of all obviously i need a magnetic snap so here are my pattern pieces all cut out. So I've got my pattern piece one. Um, this is my outer fabric, which is cork. Then I've got my lining fabric here, which is a quilting cotton. And then I've got my non-wave and fusible interfacing, which is to be the backing for my quilting cotton. Next, we've got our pattern pieces 2A and 2B. So you'll see that they are actually the reverse of each other. After that, we've got our pattern piece three. Now, pattern piece three is the Decaville Heavy or Pelon 526. So you will definitely need a heavy interfacing or stabilizer for this because it's what gives the prism glasses case its main structure. The next thing I'm going to do is bring across my four gusset pieces. Now, because I'm using cork, I need to prepare my gusset pieces first, otherwise the backing on the cork will fray afterwards. Obviously cork doesn't fray, but the backing on it does. So I'm gonna take my kitchen lighter and I'm just going to very quickly burn around all the edges, just burn off any little pieces that happen to be there. So now I've burnt off the edges of all of my pieces, I'm going to now apply some fabric glue. Now, 
this is the fabric glue that I use. You don't have to use this one. You can use any transparent fabric glue that you have to hand. Um, I like this one, it dries quite quickly and obviously I'm in the south of Spain so I use what I can get. Um, you could use edge coat if you prefer um, but since these are such small pieces glue is probably a slightly better option because it won't be quite so thick. So taking my rolly tool here, if you haven't got one of these you could use a really small paintbrush, put your glue onto a small dish or something and then you could use a paintbrush to do this instead. Now, um, when we attach the gusset pieces to the glasses case, um, we're actually going to trim down this shorter edge later on. So I am not going to use my glue or edge coat on this shorter edge because we will be trimming it down later. But I am going to treat all of the other edges on all four pieces. Okay, so now I'll just set those four pieces aside to dry. Let's apply the magnetic snap to the lining fabric. So, um, to start off with, I've found the midpoint. And then I've measured down and made a mark. So the measurements are in the pattern instructions or alternatively, you can take the pattern piece and you'll see on your pattern piece there's a circle. You can just mark through the circle there. Using my marking tool, I've got a pencil. I'm going to take the washer that came with the magnetic snap and I'm going to place that centrally over the mark I made. And draw two lines. Now, using my craft knife, or you could use your um, seam ripper if you've got one, I'm just going to very carefully pierce through those holes. So with my magnetic snap, I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to push the prongs through the two holes that I've just made. So because this is quilting cotton, <clears throat> I'm just going to take a little piece of Decaville Heavy just to place over the top just to give a little bit of added structure to it. So. Same again, I'm going to take my washer, make some marks, use my craft knife to make two holes. There. So now I'm just going to place that over the prongs, a bit of extra security, place my washer over the top and I'm going to push the sides prongs out. Now some people push these out, some people push them towards the centre. Personally I like to push them out so you don't end up with a big bulky piece in the middle and now that the Decaville is here it should protect the quilting cotton from the edges of those two prongs. There we are. I've got my three rectangles and my triangular shaped one. I'm going to turn over my pattern piece and you'll see that I've already marked some lines on the pattern piece and the central one here. The marks for these can be found in the pattern instructions and on the size of your pattern piece so it's entirely up to you. You can either use your pattern piece to mark them or you can measure them out with a ruler. So I'm going to take each of my Decaville pieces and I'm going to find the midpoint on all of them. Okay, and then I'm going to find the midpoint of my pattern piece one. Now using this midpoint and the midpoint on my pieces, I'm going to line up the midpoints and the edges of my Decaville with the marked lines. Okay, so we've got this one, 
this one starts at the next mark line so we've got a space here so up centrally line it up with the marked lines if you want you can draw lines right the way across to help you okay last one of the rectangles so that centrally okay and then of course our last piece the triangular shaped one is going at the top and it needs to be the distance down from the top that this mark comes down Okay, so this is in your pattern instructions. Again, make sure that it's lined up centrally. Now we're going to take this over to the iron and we're going to iron these pieces into place. So make sure they don't shift too much because obviously this is the structure of your prism glasses case. Now you will notice that the space between the rectangles here is different to the space between the last rectangle and the triangular shaped one. That is correct. Okay, so we need to make sure that this space here is slightly bigger than the other ones. Okay, so I'm going to go and iron those in place. So turning the lining fabric over and working on the bottom straight edge, I'm going to draw a line across the bottom, measuring up two centimeters from the bottom edge. Now I'm going to fold the bottom edge up to meet that marked line and using my iron I'm going to press that into place. So if you're using a quilting cotton or something that can be ironed for your outer fabric you can now also do the same with your outer fabric. Because I'm using cork I can't actually iron this into place so I'm just going to have to fold it across that bottom edge. So taking my two pattern piece one, my lining and my outer fabric, I'm going to lay them right sides together. Okay. And I'm going to clip them in place all the way around. Okay, so because I'm using cork, I'm just going to bend this edge back and clip that into place, matching up with the bottom edge here of my lining fabric, so both edges are matching. So starting in this bottom corner, I'm going to backstitch really, really well at the beginning. I'm starting here, I'm going to sew down the side, all the way down to here to this point, pivot to here, pivot again slightly to the top, down this side to this point and all the way back down the side to the end back stitching really really well when I get to the bottom obviously catching these two end pieces here to make sure that they stay in place there we are so if you can see I've stitched right up the side of the Decaville I'm not saying over the top of the Decaville the Decaville is actually still free but I'm saying right the way up against it that will give us a nice clean edge. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim down the excess but I'm not trimming this part here. We're going to leave this little piece here longer and we're just going to start trimming from a bit further down. Okay so being careful not to cut our stitches just trim down all our excess little bit closer on the corners so as we can get a nice point obviously when we get to the end just pushing that out a little bit so we're not taking these end pieces off so now carefully we're going to unclip this and we're going to turn this through. Now be careful that your Decaville doesn't come away. If it does, it's not too much of a problem. We can always iron it back into place, but just be a little bit careful. So I always find that if I push from the bottom rather than pulling. So push out those corners, the points as best you can. You might need a 
pointy tool, a stick or something, maybe a chopstick or a stiletto if you've got one just to push out those edges. You need to roll the seams a little to make sure that the lining stays behind. Okay, that's not too bad. So now I'm going to turn the whole thing over and the flap end, the end that's got the magnetic snap, I'm just going to fold in the crease between the two pieces of Decaville, between the one here and the one here, you'll be able to feel there's a gap. I'm just going to fold that there. And I'm going to take my chalk marker. And just where it creases here, I'm going to make a mark. Okay, if you can see that. And do the same on the other side. In the pattern instructions, it will tell you that we need to stitch a line across this line here and then around the flap at the top. If you want, you can also stitch a line across the center between the other pieces of Decaville. The purpose of that is to make sure that everything stays in place and it gives us a nice sharp point. However, if you don't want the stitch lines to appear, on your fold on these creases here you do not need to do it it will happily stay in place without it but if you are a little bit nervous about these pieces moving you can do these as well I'm just going to stitch my line across this one and then stitch across the flap edge we are not stitching down the sides so now we're going to add the other half of our magnetic snap so a little bit fiddly we're going to fold our glasses case into its prism shape so this top edge here needs to sit where the flap folds over okay so being careful not to push this down too much leave yourself a little bit of a gap at the top okay, clip this in place Press down on our magnetic snap and do this. It leaves me a slight mark here, which tells me that's where I can put my washer. I'm going to take my pencil, my marking tool, and mark my lines. Now taking my craft knife, I'm just going to pierce through, being really careful because obviously there is Decaville behind it, which means it's quite thick. Now remember, this is coming up to me, so we're going in from this side. Press that right the way through. Okay, now this time I'm not putting extra Decaville on there because I've got cork and I've got my Decaville heavy here. If you're using something like quilting cotton, you might want to add just an extra little piece just because, but say because I'm using cork, I'm quite happy. So I'm gonna put my washer on. And same as before, I'm pushing the prongs out to the sides. Now, I'm just going to put a little bit of Decaville Light, or you could use Decaville Heavy, over the top of that just to protect the quilting cotton from these prongs. So now I'm going to fold this back in, clip it in place. When I've done that, I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch across this bottom edge using a 3mm stitch length with a 3mm seam allowance or eighth of an inch. Back stitching really, really well, beginning and end. Okay, so these are our pattern pieces 2A and 2B. So to start off with, we will need one of each. So we'll take one of each and put these ones over to the side. So turning over our main panel, 
And I'm going to take, first of all, the pattern piece 2B, okay? So that's this one with the straight edge with the slanting down towards your right when it's face up. Okay. Now we're going to line up the top corner of this with the stitching on the flap, okay? And lining up this long edge here with the edge of our main panel. Okay. So we're actually going to bring it just slightly below the stitching just to give it space. We're going to clip that in place. And then we're going to take our pattern piece 2A. We're going to turn our main panel around and this time we're joining this point here with the top corner here matching up with the stitch line and the edge of the main panel. Okay. So not right up here at the top, we're going to come down just a little and clip that in place. Now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine, back stitching really really well at the beginning and the end of each of these pattern piece two, I'm going to stitch a line from the very top corner here, meeting up with the stitching from the top. I'm going to stitch down the side, right the way across, and all the way up to the other side, stopping when I get to the stitch line that comes across this flap. There we are, so those are stitched in place now. If we look from the top all the way down, meeting up with the other end. Now, on the other side, we're going to do the opposite. So this was pattern piece 2B and this was pattern piece 2A. So we're actually going to swap those around. So this time, we need pattern piece 2A here and pattern piece 2B here. Okay, so make sure you get them the right way around. We need to make sure that with the flap facing up, our two gusset pieces are pointing down. And with it flap side up, again, our two pattern pieces are pointing diagonally in towards the center and not the other way around, okay? We don't want this. Okay, so if it looks like this, it's wrong. You'll need to swap them around so as they look like this. Okay, so now we're going to take them over to the sewing machine and repeat exactly what we did on this side, starting at the top corner, all the way down, across the center, all the way back to the other side, back stitching really, really well at the beginning and end of each of the pattern piece two pieces. Okay, so we're going to start on this side, it doesn't matter which side you start. You will notice at the bottom of each of these gussets there is a small tab. Okay. So we're going to pull on this one and as we pull you'll notice this side lifts up, that's correct. We're going to fold, turn this around for you, we're going to fold this around and line up the tab with the edge of the outer piece. Okay, so you might need to manipulate it a little bit to get it into place, but you'll notice this side is now standing up. Okay, so we're gonna clip that in place. And then coming over to this side, we're going to do the same thing. Now, for ease of sewing, you might want to crush down the side pieces. I'm going to clip that in place, crush down out of the way. By doing that, it stops the pressure on the tabs where you're sewing. Okay, so it stops these from popping out too much. Now, I'm going to carefully take one of these off, or two of these off. When we start sewing, we're going to start stitching from the center of this tab, three millimeters or eighth of an inch from the edge. 
we're using a three millimeter stitch length but we're going to start sewing from the center and then go backwards and then forwards and back again to the middle the reason we're doing that is because if you start over here by this corner and you can see it's doing it already it will actually start to lift away and what you'll end up with is your tab sort of like this where they're a bit bit wonky bit squiffy so maneuver it into place at the sewing machine put your needle down where you want it but in the center of the tab sew backwards then forwards then back again that way it won't move too much so let's take that over to the sewing machine okay so this is what it looks like now obviously it's standing up in its place if you've got a little bit of excess here like i have you can just trim that little bit off it really doesn't matter okay so now we're going to repeat that exact same process on the other side so we're almost finished now what we're going to do next is we're actually going to close our case okay so we'll snap that closed and we're going to pull out these side gussets okay let's pull those out of the way now it doesn't matter which side you start on i'm going to start on this side so i'm going to pull both sides out so as they are meeting up the top the bottom and the sides i'll clip those in place clip one at the top as well if you want okay now i'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance i'm going to stitch all the way from the top down to the bottom edge here when I've done that, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we're looking a little squished. We need to put this back into shape. There you go, we're nearly there. So you'll notice we've got these big wide seams now. So we're going to trim down this seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch so fairly close to the stitching but be really careful not to cut the stitching and we're going to do that on both sides there we are so i've just trimmed that down as close as i could get being careful now we're going to have to reseal this edge where we've just cut so do that on both sides and then we're finished so I'm just going to squash this back into place. We need to refold those edges. See where we've squashed it quite a lot. Just get it back into shape. If you've used quilting cotton, obviously this will be slightly easier. My cork's not too bad. It's quite warm in here today. There we have it. So tuck those in. And there we are, one prism glasses case. <laughs>